everyone, and welcome to episode 294 of the Board Game Barbecue podcast, brought to you by Advent Games and our Patreons. I'm joined here today by two lovely hosts. So first up, I've got Joe in the host chair. Joe, how are you going? Doing good, Lauren. Very excited for this chat. I know. I am super stoked. And the reason is we have a very esteemed guest. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> But keep it going. We've got Emily, Emily of Emily and Things and Shut Up and Sit Down fame. Emily, how are you? Oh, I'm doing so well, thank you. And I appreciate you going in order of loveliness as well, starting with Joe. Joe is the loveliest. You can't see him, but oh my God, he's exuding loveliness. But yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Hello. We, we, we can see him and uh, Joe is quite lovely. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited to have you on the podcast i feel like i need to make it more australian somehow though because you're talking to british people across the all pond. the time it's so uncomfortable time. talking to you with your australian accents it's like home what is this <laughs> what is this? i will say i get very put off by australian accents on tv though yeah that is true it's a little off-putting isn't it Especially when there's a mix, when there's like an, an American or a, or a Brit with against an Aussie. Sometimes it's really, we sound really distinct. It's true. If you could both do British accents for the rest of this and make me feel comfortable, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> Not about that, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Can I call you Tom Joe? How do I <laughs> make you feel at home? <laughs> sure. On that lovely note, let's get stuck straight in. Straight stuck in. Let, let's start. So, Emily. Tell us about yourself. Give us a little intro for the people, for the listeners who don't know you. Hello. You probably only will know me from Shut Up and Sit Down. If you do it at all, I made a couple of videos like a year ago um, and <laughs> I'm making a new one now. I promise it's coming out soon. And yeah, I'm on the, I'm on the Shut Up and Sit Down podcast a lot. I, I bring a weird energy. Some people like it. Some people don't. They, they want to know where Quinn's is. I, they don't care about me. What do you want to know? Lauren, tell me. What am I to say? <laughs> Such a broad question. Such a broad question. Okay. Let's, let's narrow the scope a little and we'll make it board gamey because this is a board game podcast and I don't know, we're going to derail it so quickly. <laughs> tell us a little bit about your experience in board gaming, how you got into the hobby, that kind of little general background. Okay. Yeah. So... Board games, they were always around, weren't they? Like, well, embarrassingly, even though it's like how everyone starts those Hasbro games when you're when you're young, you know, playing playing Cluedo, playing Monopoly, all of that with my family. That's all that they knew. So I would played all those constantly. But then, like, getting into the modern board game stuff was like in high school. I want to say when I was like thirteen, I met a friend called Katie. She's awesome. We love Katie. Shout out to Katie. Shout out, Katie. Hey, love Katie. Katie. Hell yeah. Please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I would go around to her place with my friends and she had a huge collection, like, like what I have now, but she was like, you know, a little teen and I'm like, what the hell? Who, who <laughs> has this many games of all these varieties? No clue this existed. So yeah, we would, we would play all sorts, all sorts of games, like the Game of Thrones board game. We played that a bunch. King of Tokyo, wow. Two Rooms in a Boom. Ah, oh, it was a good time. That was a good time. Then after high school, I kind of like fell off a little bit. You know, I was like, I was too cool for it. Too cool for board games. Ugh, that's for nerds. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> so yeah, I kind of fell off it. But then lockdown happened in the, in the middle of my university career. And, and in that spiral of sadness, I was like, I want to focus on something. So that's when board games became my main focus. I was watching and listening to Shut Up and Sit Down constantly. I was buying all sorts of games all the time, you know, trying to distract from the sadness, the dysphoria before I transitioned. Is this where we wanted to go with that question? Is this? <laughs> we, we can go anywhere. I, I've tanked it. I've tanked We're it. We're on a journey. A way. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> the boat is a board game box and we're just meandering wherever we go i love it that's horrible <laughs> that's gonna get so stoked that cardboard's gonna sink 
We're, we're, in, we're in for a terrible trip. Lauren, what have you done to us? I we're trust in Joe, we're going to die. <laughs> I, I definitely identify, I definitely identify with, with that, Emily. I think lockdown is when it really exploded for me as well. So when I found the board game barbecue community. Yeah, didn't um, this happen during that? That's what I thought I heard when, in yeah. the podcast I listened to. You like found each other during lockdown? Yeah, so I'm one of the newest members, um, but I was a community member for a long time before I joined the podcast. Um, and I found the podcast around the um, the lockdowns and my board game collection went from like 20 board games to like 120 board games within a very short span of time. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Experience, yeah. <laughs> and like such few people to play with as well. So I didn't yes. even like end up playing a lot of them at yeah. the time, but it was just like yeah, exactly. the joy of having them, the joy of buying them. Marie Kondo, get out of here. I have joy in all of these <laughs> exactly. all of these little boxes. <laughs> exactly. I have I have games that I'm like, this sucks. So like objectively, I did not enjoy playing this, but I don't want to get rid of it. It brings me happiness. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So how has your collection ballooned out now? Where are we at? I don't know. I probably have like 200 and something, I think. I used to keep an Excel spreadsheet of them, but then I stopped after like 150. Uh, too many <laughs> <laughs> we love a good excel spreadsheet i know i color coded <laughs> it i had i had so many different like little details about each one i i went all out yeah during that time was when i was like also because i was just watching shut up and sit down and stuff i was like well i could probably do this i could probably make videos like this that sounds fun and a good use of my time so that's when i started doing that as well you can't find those videos anymore because I'm, there's no way I'm gonna have people looking at that. Horrible. I I was I was I was not myself then. But yeah, so I was doing that. I made one about a game that Shut Up and Sit Down made, and then Matt saw it, and and I think that's where I got on their radar truly. But then you know it was like a year later that Tom contacted me, and that all happened. But yeah, I was just like making game videos very sporadically like every few months whereas now i'm so on top of the ball i i'm making them all the time now for sure um but yeah yeah and like you know i i I, after transitioning i started going to like a queer group for it and that's that was super fun really enjoyed that and also like during that time talking to them i found out that like none of them cared about content created about about board games like they were enjoying the board games they were having a great time with them but like they wouldn't watch anything surrounding it but they would like for like video games and stuff and so that made me want to want to do this more do you think uh, so to to take that a little bit further do you think in that group it's because there's not a whole lot of you know queer kind of content creators out there in the board game space so that it's not interested in seeing something they don't identify with a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. And like, I would, I would lead them to think a theme or something, you know, somewhere where there's a little bit of, well, not a little bit, it's obviously like a huge representation, but you know, anywhere where there is some, hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, you, you don't want to, I don't know. It's a, it was a big group of trans women and like, they're not going to want to watch these rye uh, cis white men just talking about <laughs> talking about games in the very the way that they do with their little dry jokes and everything. I love them. I love who I work with, but you know, they represent a very specific group, and it's so mm. prevalent in it. Mm. You see any of it, and it's like uh, that's not for me. For me, you know, so I'm I identify as a queer man, and so for me, I found gaming spaces, video gaming, and board gaming spaces really intimidating. Because of you know not wanting to, they're oft, often cis white men, and they're dominated in uh, by those people uh, in those spaces, and so I always felt afraid of being you know rejected or judged. I'd be very interested to hear if you're happy to talk about it, what your experience through your transition has been like in kind of board gaming spaces, and hopefully there's been positive ones as well as negative ones. Hopefully, hopefully there's been negative ones. What are you talking about, Joe? <laughs> I hope there's both. Rather, rather <laughs> than negative ones. 
<laughs> Unbelievable, Jay. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Classic Tom. Classic Tom. That's definitely Tom. Call me Tom when I do that. (laughs) So, yeah, I kind of avoided it for a very long time. Like, I was exclusively looking for queer spaces for it. Mm. Initially, I went to one that was, like, entirely, like, queer men, which was, like, so lovely. They were so lovely. But then I found the the one that was, like, predominantly trans women. It's just, like, that felt more comfortable to me. But, you know, it's, it's always been yeah queer (laughs) that I like initially went to now I've got a a pretty good group of a mainly mainly straight cis men and they're they're lovely but I just like found them as friends they weren't like a a group already so I don't really I don't know I haven't really like thrown myself into a random group to find out (laughs) but but like so interested you know when I joined shut up and sit down you, you can imagine what happened. Obviously, a majority of that was taken away because Ava was previously on the team. Mm. So mm. they like kind of, yeah, they got used to that. Um, I, I've never spoken to Ava, but I assume that was a horrible time to just mm. straight out come out with only the rest of the team as they are. I imagine she went through a lot because I went through a lot and, you know, it was already after her. But yeah, that was very difficult. <laughs> that was like the 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 worst, you know, transphobia and everything that I've gotten in my life, and has contributed a lot to why there there have been less videos from me. But I'm working my way back to it. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Specifically, like it, it's so interesting because you know the team would get to the comments a lot, like before I could see them a majority of the time. And like mm. delete them from the channel, whatever, whatever. Mm. And then you'd see like comments that are like, "Why are they deleting comments? That that comment was just criticizing." But it's like, if you read the original comment, it was like totally misgendering me and everything. But they're like, "This is a conspiracy. Why are these getting deleted? It's so strange." But yeah, Reddit's the worst place for it for me. I guess it was also just because it's hard to it's hard to distinguish. Like I'm, I'm, I am getting off track. I'm sorry, but no. I also make videos that are very me. They're very different from well, not very, but they are different in tone and energy and everything to what else is on the channel. So it's hard to distinguish when getting so many comments like "We don't like her," "We don't like her direction," or anything like that, and when they're coupled with transphobic and everything it's just like a big ball of dislike and it's like that was hard to deal with Mm. so yeah yeah it hasn't happened in person but it's happened yeah (laughs) from that yeah yeah it's just too big of a group you know has been primarily youtube comments and reddit is it like is it has it been elsewhere uh yeah well like uh dms and whatever but you know what can you do i i've i've gotten past this i'm working my way through it (laughs) but yeah it was difficult You've been thrust into a very public eye, at least as far as the board game space is concerned, right? Yeah. And it's not surprising that there are just the dredges of people mm-hmm. that suck. But is is there anything that surprised you or been kind of positive from that experience or reception? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 for sure. Well, like a vast majority of people are so nice about me. Like for how different... My stuff is. I was expecting a much worse. I mean, I think even Tom was like, I expected this to be go go much worse than it has. Um, the reception <laughs> was like really warm from a majority of people, and also just obviously like the amount of queer people that have reached out and been like, "This is the best. I love seeing you." Like, you know, I'll put a little joke about like being an egg in a in a video or something. I don't know. If, And then seeing all of the comments just like, oh my God, I can't believe she's done that. That's so cool. Like they just get so excited seeing the, seeing our culture being brought into it. And that's just, that's just the best. It's just the best. So it's like what draws me to constantly want to keep going with it. But it's just been a little nagging thing in the back of my mind, that minority. But yeah, majority of people are so lovely. It is really difficult, you know, when you've got this point of difference from what the norm is, quote unquote, the norm 
you know, when you look at when Tom first joined Shut Up and Sit Down, he copped it. That he, like people were pretty awful to him. They're like, he doesn't fit. I don't, I don't like him. I don't like his stuff. Well, that's, at least I saw quite a bit of that. Um, but you know, Tom doesn't have that trans experience. You know, queer experience, the experience as a woman that the three of us have on this on this recording, where it would just it just feels different. It hits different um, when it's coupled with your identity. I think, uh, and I'm sure the majority of it is that people just don't like change. Yeah, I mean, and I've apologized to him constantly for doing that, for leading the charge on all of those hate comments. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that's like when I started watching and I, I didn't even realize that was happening really. Yeah. Like I was like, he's cool. <laughs> I like these people. I was just watching everything. Yeah. But yeah, a hundred percent. And he, I don't want to speak for him or anything, but like he has his own troubles with the Reddit comments and everything as well, just for the sake of it's like, he's taken such a leadership role these days and it, and people, the amount of people that are like, why is, why is there so much Tom? And it's like, well, you wouldn't have anything if Tom weren't doing anything. Yeah. yeah it's annoying. Yeah. Frustrating to see friends go through that. Yeah. yeah the yeah, parasocial sure. relationships. I'm sure that that team experience yeah, is kind sure. of on another level. It's just not really seen in this space otherwise. Yeah. A big thing to randomly be thrust into, especially like I was only a year into my transition when that happened. So it's just like, mm. I don't know. I was so just being sure of myself and just being happy with who I was. And then, so then it was like, but we don't like who you are. Get out of here. And it's like, oh no, <laughs> all of those feelings are coming back. Mm -mm. And it's kind of coupled with the trying to find your creative voice on the platform as well. Yeah, definitely. Which is like a whole separate finding yourself. Yeah, for sure. Because I feel like maybe, maybe this, maybe it comes across. I feel like Tom in particular is like so much more wanting to be like a very good critic. He goes into great stress <laughs> to, to make sure he is, coming out with like really good critical thoughts and everything. Whereas I am to a fault, maybe I'm like, I want to make this super entertaining. Like, I just want to, I just want to have really good jokes, really good everything. And then like the critical stuff is like an afterthought to me. And yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think that's fun. I think it's cool, but some people just don't like that sort of thing, which is fine. I would love to hear a little more about your kind of, review creative process because I think your videos are wildly entertaining I think they're really funny thanks and have a unique brand and in terms of how they fit kind of on Emily and things and also on, on shut up and sit down so I was wondering kind of what process do you go through kind of either selecting games to review or games you're going to talk about in general because you're getting sent swashes of games now are there kind of particular things you look out for or things you consider yeah um i noticed joe didn't come in with any compliments there that's a bit uh, unbelievable joe that's a bit i was gonna make you uncomfortable with sincere compliments after you answer this question so okay no good, good just I you wait <laughs> just you wait <laughs> they're coming <laughs> <laughs> oh no okay yeah so a majority of the games that i that i play for like thoughts of review uh, with the straight boys, my boys, they're, they're men in their 20s, don't freak out. They're fun. It's all good. <laughs> um, nothing weird. So, yeah, I, I'll play them with them. And a lot of the time, if if we're having a very good time with this game, just having, like, a lot of fun and we don't really know why, that's kind of more interesting to me. If if we, if we well, like, also, if we're having a good time and we know why, that's obvious, that's good. I will consider that game. But if I don't know why, I've got to put a lot of thought into this. Why am I having such a nice time? That feels like something that's worthy of making a video about to me. The fun of, of these sorts of videos, I find, is just like unraveling your thoughts about something. If you have clear thoughts, it's it's pretty fun. But if you're listening to someone who's like, this this really challenged me, this is really like interesting in a way that I haven't, experience before it's bringing a new experience that i'm really enjoying and i kind of want you to know what i have experienced even if you don't go out and buy this game i want you to know what i've experienced i did one on phantom inc and i was just like it's halloween <laughs> i want to do a halloween video <laughs> i want to make it fun and cool uh, i have like a little themed idea for it so i'll do that 
the one that I've got coming out soon, which well, it's almost done, Lauren and Joe. It's almost done. It'll come out soon. There's an extra little like element to it where I'm talking about two games. They both have something in common, which is relevant to something that is happening in the board game space that I, I, I really care about and I'm passionate about. And I want to talk about that other thing. So then they're just kind of like my vessel while also being good games I want people to know about. But it's that other thing I want to talk about. So that, that video on Phantom Inc. was the first video of yours that I'd, I'd watched. And then I went down this rabbit hole of watching all of your other videos. And those, your videos legitimately make me laugh out loud. A lot of those shut up and sit down videos to date, you know, would make me chuckle and I'd be more about the board games. But I actually really, I think, enjoyed your comedy. Thanks. Maybe it's the queer angle. I think it's the Australian kind of angle. I think we're very <laughs> yeah, irreverent probably. and a bit dirty. And, uh, you know, um, I think your humour matches up well with Shut Up and Sit Down because the Brits can be a bit irreverent. But I think that Australian edge is what I really enjoy about your your comedy uh, and it really tickles me uh, a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. That's leading into uh, another question. So with designing the reviews, I guess, do you come up with jokes first and then start to look at the critical stuff as well? Or do you go for the critical stuff first and then go jokes after that? Critical stuff first entirely. Yeah. <laughs> there is yeah, no yeah. way I'm going to spend any time going into it if I can't. I'm not going to just make a video making jokes about a game and have nothing to say about it. Like I'm not I'm not that focused on the entertainment part. My my jokes aren't on on some crazy level. They're they're like I can make little jokes about anything if it's like if it's good. I don't know. They're just like little jokes. They're I just think you're selling jokes, yourself short. Right? I Gee, think you're selling yourself very short. They, they tickle me, and I'm largely dead inside. So. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> I guess, oh, so let me modify the question. How do you find the jokes, I guess, in the, in the criticism? A lot of what I enjoy about playing games generally is making it entertaining. <laughs> like, it sounds really silly. I, I really don't want to win games very often. I don't really want to... I don't know. I, I want to win it. And I'm like having a fun time finding out the strategy of it and everything. But I really want to make it a good time for everyone around. So I, I tend to just I tend to just be me. This is just kind of who I am. And then and then jokes just jokes just come out of it. But a lot of the time, I'm just like, I, I run a lot. So I go for a run. And I'll be thinking about the game. And I'll be thinking, what, what's a good what's a good little joke I can I can think of for this? You know, the, uh, there was one that I did. This is one of the jokes that I saw most people get excited about, which made me happy. For uh, well, it was called Grove. The game's called Grove, and it's <laughs> it's so stupid because it's just like it's designed by Mark Tuck, and I was like Tuck, haha, fun. <laughs> um, and then, so then, so then I was like, I'm I'm gonna make a little joke about that. But then, but then it wasn't until like I was on a run, I was like, oh. The, the game's about fruits and it has a squirrel, the fruits and a squirrel friend. And I'm talking about Tuck and I can make it, I can make it about drag queens. That's a good joke. That's like actually made it a joke rather than just making fun of some poor designer's name. <laughs> so they don't come immediately all the time, but they, but they, but they come eventually. Sounds like it's just pure talent. That's all Thank it is. So much. They just come to you. Pure talent. That's pretty much what I'm saying. You just have to be me. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Now you say, Emily, that you, don't necessarily need to win games but mm. i did watch the shut up and sit down twitch stream of mm. june imperium that you played yeah. with tom and <laughs> yeah. i would love if you could share this story because the story. ending to that stream was outstanding <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> okay yeah so <laughs> it's, I don't know if it'll come across. It might sound petty and bad. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, so Tom, he 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 had been talking about June Imperium constantly. He'd been talking about June constantly. June Chu had just come out. He's just he's just con talking talking about this like it's the best game and the best like series on on the planet. And so I'm like, wow, I've never played it. I've never heard like I've heard of June, but I've never watched anything. I've never read any of the books. Nothing, nothing about Dune had ever crossed me personally. So he was like, um, we were recording a podcast. And he was talking about Dune Imperium. And he was like, oh, we should play it on stream. That'll be fun. We can like, sh you've never played it before. That'll be a good time. We can show everyone what it's like for a new player. And I was like, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. 
<laughs> and then <laughs> and then I I thought <laughs> this is how my mind works. I'm so sorry, Joe. I thought, well, I'm gonna I've got a week until this stream happens. I've got a solid week. I can I can probably read all those books. I can probably <laughs> I can probably read six books. That doesn't seem that hard. I, oh, I may as well watch the films as well. That seems pretty good. And yeah, I'm going to learn how to play this game on an expert level and watch every... <laughs> I watched I watched so many videos talking about strategy of this game. I And I took notes and I made uh, little pin boards of all of, <laughs> all of how to play this game um, so that I could destroy him. And I did. And that was a good time. <laughs> And I had a nice little ending to it where I made him feel a fool. And that was a good, that was good. Did you enjoy it, it Lauren? Outstanding. I genuinely belly laughed. The, I think the piece de resistance was the video of you at the sand dune, which you went, just the, the <laughs> level of commitment to the bit. <laughs> yeah, I went to a sand dune. Yeah, I went to the sand dunes and I, I took a little video of me falling down a sand dune. I had, it was, <laughs> I was asking him earlier in the, in the stream, he was talking about I can't remember. He was, he was saying like the game was juicy or something. He uses that word a lot, juicy. And I was like, is there any, is there any juice in Dune? Is there any sort of like juice in Dune? He was like, oh, there's, there's the water of life. I'm like, oh yeah. Oh, what's that? And he explained it to me. It's this blue drink, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, I had like a little, <laughs> a little, a glass of, of blue Powerade <laughs> next to me <laughs> because I was like, I, and when I'm doing the reveal, I'm going to drink this drink. And I did. And I, I was like, call me mother. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. It was good. He he freaked out. Fun stuff. <laughs> it was outstanding. If Thank anyone's you. listening to this, if it's still on Twitch, I implore you to go watch the end of that stream because wow, so great. I appreciate Bravo. that. <laughs> I didn't. I haven't seen it yet. I need definitely having listened to it. I need to uh, watch this now. For sure. <laughs> on the note of that, that's obviously. Very, very memorable for the people that were happened to be in the stream. Do you have any other big memorable moments or experiences to date as part of Shut Up and Sit Down? Do you kind of any things that stand out in the highlight reel? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> I've already said it, but truly the best part of it is getting any sort of DM or anything where it's like, feel like I'm trans or I am trans. And seeing you is just like the best thing ever. You, like seeing you be yourself as well. They're so sweet about, because I'm just being a little weirder, you know, unapologetically a little weirder. They're very nice and that's very sweet. And I, I pretty much cry every time because it's just the sweetest thing in the world. Even just like, oh God, like even just, I don't know. Having, having Tom reach out initially is crazy because I was just getting you know, a few hundred views or whatever per video. I made a review of Oath and that kind of, that got like 10,000 or something. But, you know, I'm just watching these people constantly, <laughs> constantly. And then having, having Tom reach out, it was just like, what, what is this? What is happening right now? This is crazy. And then it wasn't long after that, he offered me the role. And it's like, what is this? I don't, I don't understand this. This makes no sense to me. But I, I guess I'm gonna do this. That was pretty. That was a pretty big deal for me. <laughs> I, nothing like that had ever happened before. Can you tell us about any upcoming projects on your own channel on Emily and Things? Anything that you've got in the pipeline that you're working on that people can get excited about? It's so interesting. I have so many videos that I've like filmed, and then I just haven't done them properly yet. <laughs> but yeah, I, I have one about my transition coming out. Because it was recently two years of HRT. Yes, it's okay to clap. It's okay to clap. I'm not making them do this. They were already doing this, I swear. <laughs> so yeah, I have that coming out. But you know, that's difficult to film. That's some that's some raw stuff. So I've tried it a few times and I'm I'm like halfway through now. But it's also very long. Um, I don't know. Hopefully some people find joy in it, but you know, it, it's a it's more of a personal project type of thing. The more of those stories we have on the internet, the better. The more of those I think so. I agree. I don't want to put any of them down or anything at all because it's amazing. But they're, they're all like very somber. 
and it's like kind of sad and hard to watch a lot of them. And you know, my my story isn't perfect or anything, but like far from. But I, I'm trying to I'm trying to have a have a lighter mood to it. That's like I've I've got to try and because it's like the best thing I've ever done in my life transitioning. And I don't want people mm. to watch these videos and feel feel like that's not the case because it is mm. anyway. That's what I'm that's what I'm getting at. But yeah, I I filmed a <laughs> I filmed a video with a friend who knows nothing about board games and I gave her a quiz about board games and that was fun and stupid and and a good time and I've just got to edit that. That'll come out soon. But not you know, if you're excited about that, wow, you're 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 wild. <laughs> I wouldn't be excited <laughs> about that, but it will be a good video when you see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, great. I guess that's a nice segue into um, our next question, which was uh, in one of your videos on your own um, personal channel, you mentioned that you love to make trivia for your friends and that you've been wanting to do a board game trivia show. Yeah. When you do do trivia for your friends, board game trivia for your friends, do you have particular trivia categories or rounds that you think you're really proud of or um, that are really creative and that you really enjoy? Hell yeah. They're good. They're good. They're good. They're not board game trivia with my friends. Because, you know, they're not all as obsessed with it as we three. That's a shame. Yeah. If you wanna if you wanna join one and I'll make one, go for it, Joe. Go for it, Lauren. Yeah. I'm I'm open to it. But I am I am also making one for, for Shut Up and Sit Down. That should come out as well. That'll be that. it's all based on drawing. Maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Maybe that's fine. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this was another during lockdown I got this was like prior to making videos. This is what I was pumping all of my creative energy into um, was like these trivias. And I make them still now up to that quality just because I was at that time. And it's what people expect. <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was making them very, do you watch? No, you wouldn't watch. Have you heard of House of Games? The, the, the show, it's, there's a show called House of Games. It's Richard Osman. House of Games? Yes. Yes, I have. (laughs) Have you? Yes, I have. It's like non-traditional trivia, more in the lines of that, if you know what that is. So it's more like little games rather than like trivia based games rather than just straight trivia questions. There was one that I made, (laughs) which I, I, I really liked. That was like one of my friends is really into true crime stuff. So I made this one like for them where it was like, I make graphics and everything. It's very, it's very fun. So like a, a dossier comes up and it will be like, you've got to solve this crime. Like you've got to find out who did this crime. And then it'll be like a little piece of evidence will, will come up on the screen. So it'll be like scorch marks on the scene. And it's like, oh, interesting. And then you can either put in your answer, which is just like texting me what, what you think the answer is, which will lock it in and you can't put another answer in for the rest of it. And if you get it early, you'll get more points or you can see the next clue. And then whoever the culprit is, is like someone in pop culture. So like one of them was Charmander, if it was the scorch marks on the scene. And then it was like <laughs> little great. little bits of, yeah. So that was fun. It's just things like that. They're fun stuff. I also like during the lockdown was designing games a lot. So it, it's just, I was doing all that trash. <laughs> Any Anything that kind of got a little more fleshed out? like since then no i haven't looked back at them <laughs> that was that was a different time lauren i <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but like there was some like i was making a roll and write that like you're it was like typical serial killer in the in the woods and you're trying to escape them but i think it was more like a monster rather than a serial killer but then like if you you got one side of the dice then it would put the the monster track up and then like if it got to a certain point then you had to like tear off one of the tracks as if it was like that spot's been destroyed by the monster or whatever terrible stuff it pr- maybe someone can make it work ah, it wasn't terrible. working for me <laughs> terrible because you tear it <laughs> um yeah so yeah i was just making lots of random stuff and then my girlfriend at the time was like, why are you doing this? This won't amount to anything. And I was like, you're right. Nothing about these board games things will amount to anything. Weird, weird stuff. Look at me now. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me now. Look at you now. <laughs> We've got a few questions from our Patreons. So Jace, and we've kind of touched on this, 
He said, keeping the mental health conversation going, I'd love to hear Emily's thoughts and response to the recent question of the pod, which Emily was, you know, how board gaming affects your mental health. And also ask, with PlayCon fast approaching, wanted to know Emily's thoughts on the Australian board gaming scene in general. Oh, wow. Broad, broad. Okay. Um, so first question, first question, mental health. Oh, yeah, it's good, isn't it? Um, and then the second question. The- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what she wrote. <laughs> well, like, okay, if we're talking about, you know, beyond what I have talked about already, mm. then like, oh, my God, it's it's just it's so much fun and so good for the for the mental health to be playing games with friends isn't it isn't it crazy how much it can lighten your mood just to just to sit down with a nice game with some nice people and just like have have a have a nice little time isn't it crazy that that can do so much for you it's like when Shocking. you clean your house after it's been like messy and you're just like why why am i suddenly in such a good mood <laughs> how is this why am i a brand new person <laughs> exactly and yeah. I'm going to keep it this way forever. I'm never going to make it dirty again. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so even I kind of brushed over it earlier, but like that was a huge deal for me after transitioning to like find those groups that I found and for it to be like based around board games and just like, especially when trans women, or trans people in general, but particularly those, the people that were in that group are so like, you know, I I have ADHD, neurodivergence, prominent. Then, like, having something to focus on, like a board game, like, people who you could tell from talking to them, they would straight up tell you, like, they they don't do a whole lot of, like, socializing beyond that. They don't know how to, like, it it gives them anxiety. I get anxiety from it. I don't, I think I'm hiding it pretty well. I think I'm (laughs) hiding it pretty well, but I get anxiety. (laughs) And... (laughs) <laughs> thank you thank you tom <laughs> <laughs> and yeah so being able to find those people by playing games it's like that's the best oh god it's truly truly the best and i really enjoy it what was the second question i've forgotten it i'm so sorry that's totally fine uh what are your thoughts on the australian board gaming scene what do i think of the scene i i've already admitted that i barely <laughs> go out of my little queer groups so i i you, you two would know way more about it than i do i think that's fair though right it's that's the australian seat in my opinion it's a lot of mm. small groups not really going outside their yeah group. is that and what so it is there's all these people saying i don't know anyone to play with but there's lots of people saying that and lots of people not yeah having those communities and connections but if everyone just kind of looked up then maybe we would have more but yeah it's a yeah, weird really kind of little thing that we've got going on yeah lots of lots of little bubbles yeah lots of little bubbles uh, i think and i think i think part of it is you know like i said before if i hadn't found the board game barbecue community i probably would never have gone to a gaming meetup on my own meet with random strangers there uh, you know i've adhd and anxiety myself so i think the thought of you know any potential rejection would have repelled me from even trying to meet new people. But having met people over Discord and then feeling more comfortable to go to a board game barbecue day, seeing that the days are really diverse and it's not, you know, there are other people like me, other queer people there, other, you know, there's old people, young people, and it's there's lots of women, it's really diverse. Um, there's trans people there. I think it makes me just feel a lot more comfortable and that's why I just kept going. And it just felt really different to the usual um to the usual board gaming meetups. So I think that's what we're trying to do with PlayCon is trying to magnify what we do on, a, on the board game barbecue days and have it be a, a larger thing where everyone is welcome and everyone can come along. Um, but like you said, I think, I think if you feel like there's not going to be people like you at a space, it can feel really dangerous and feel less welcoming, you know, yeah, whether you're sure. a woman, you know, a queer person, you know, trans identifying. Yeah. Totally. And I'm, yeah, this is this is nowhere near as useful information as they just told you. But <laughs> a lot of so many of my DMs, people assuming I live in Melbourne for for one. But the, but like every Australian shut up and sit down fan seems to be from Melbourne. It's so weird to me. They're all from Melbourne, and they're like, 
I mean, a majority of them are clearly men like hitting on me, but they're like, hey, if you want to come around for a, a game night, come around. And I'm like, I don't live there, dude. Leave me alone. <laughs> but yeah, go to Melbourne, I guess. That's where it seems to everyone seems to be. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, Emily, you give, a, you give off a strong Melbourne vibe. Do I? I, I it's, so do, yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird. I give off a Sydney vibe. We've got a few more questions. So Lee wants to know, please also ask Emily if she's currently holding her mic. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. I'm not, but I can. Do you want me to? I have a horrible <laughs> habit. A horrible habit. If you listen to the Shut Up and Sit Down podcast, you'll be you'll hear like all the time. <laughs> if I'm getting like passionate, I that is me grabbing the mic. Like I I don't know if I want to do it because I don't want to ruin your perfect audio. I've probably do it. done it. Do it. I've probably do done it. it. Like I'll do this. Like I'll just I'll grab it and I'm like because I'm so impassioned. <laughs> so if, you, if whenever you hear that, just know I'm holding my mic, not on camera. Uh, if I'm not on camera, then I'm uh, then I hardly am, and I'm so sorry. And Gills asks, "How do you balance a hobby as work? Do you feel like you're at work when you're off the clock, or vice versa?" No, <laughs> shut up and sit down is not my main work. So it's just like you know, it, it, the whole thing kind of feels like a hobby to me in general. Like making videos just feels fun. Doing the podcast just kind of feels fun. I don't know. None of it. None of it feels like a like a real tangible. Oh, oh! I have to. I have to show up to talk to Tom again. Ugh, or anything like that. Um, <laughs> well, not for that. Reason. Laughing at that, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> do you, Do you see? I guess board games and you know board game content creation is something that you could or would do full time if you could. I have absolutely no clue, Joe. What? Yeah. How would I even? How would I even begin to know that? Yeah, well, I would love to if I could, but yeah. also I have to like put in more effort to do that. I I don't put out many videos, Joe. I don't put out many videos. <laughs> oh my gosh, outstanding! <laughs> I got to, I got to show you. Really tickled me, Emily. I've had <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little chuckles. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a question out. Should we should we talk about some board games because we've had. A lovely chat, Emily. Mm -hmm. but yeah, thanks. I think, Joe, I would love to hear what's been hitting your table. There's um, some games here that I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear about, if I'm honest. Yeah, so I, I recently visited Brisbane. I went to Brisbane to present at a conference and um, met up with Adrian, one of the other podcast members there, and we spent a day uh, playing a bunch of games. In a row, we played Barracks Emperors, which is a GMT game. We played Teotihuacan. Barrage and then escape plan. So by the end of that day, our brains were proper mush. Uh, but it was a great day. I had so much fun. It was really nice having a day with another board game nerd and, and being able to play a bunch of heavy games all at once. My husband's not much of a gamer, so um, I'm going to try and take the wins when I can. Um, we're usually playing lighter games together. In particular, I thought Tier 2 Weekend was really fun. I had a really great time with that. I think it's a game that when you look at it, it to me, it just looks very beige and a bit boring. So I'd never been excited about playing it. And it's one of Adrian's favorite games. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. And actually really enjoyed it. It was very fun. The mechanics and the, that kind of rondelle mechanism where you're, you're moving the dice around, uh, increasing the value of the dice to pair up your, your moves. The, that puzzle was a really pleasing puzzle that I really enjoyed a lot. Have either of you played TFT with them? I played it once async on board game arena and i don't like async games it was the most disastrous way oh, no. to play that game i think it went over the span of two months and it just became the, the like pain of my <laughs> existence months. that oh, i didn't no. take my turns in this game and so i i just i really loathed it but i don't think that's the game's fault that's bga's fault that's bga's fault so <laughs> i would i would try it again it, it's real beige beige though yeah. I like beige. I like beige. I don't discriminate, but it's real beige. <laughs> I don't like beige. I like the sparkly, nice colors, pretty yeah, exactly. art. I discriminate. Um, yeah. I'm full on discriminating. Yeah. <laughs> Get it out Same. of here. No. Yeah. <laughs> that what is this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was, it was, have you, have you, do you know, do you know the game, Emily? Have you seen it? I, I don't even, I don't even, I don't think I'm like fully comprehending the words you are saying. What, what is Teotihuacan? it called? 
Teo no, Teo Kun. I don't know it. Oh no. Oh no. You may you may recognize the box, uh, and I may be butchering the name is the other problem. Um so it's a game, so to give you a snapshot, it's a game that's all about uh it's like it's either Aztec or Mayan history where you are um uh, essentially moving workers around this rondelle, so this kind of circular board, but in the center, you're essentially building a pyramid from I think they're wooden or plastic uh, squares. And so you're basically um, building one of those kind of Aztec pyramids throughout the game as you're playing the game. So it looks quite impressive on the table when you're seeing it in front of you and you're you're all kind of contributing to build this pyramid. Um, and the theme of it is you're kind of, you know, trying to shepherd your people through to life and then undeath, or not undeath, that's, they're not turning into zombies, but through life and through death um, in, in this process to then kind of please the gods, uh, which are these tr- represented on these tracks. So, so, and it's a dice placement game, essentially. So you're using dice as workers as you're, you're moving them around. So on, when you look at pictures of it, it looks really beige and, and, and um, not that interesting, but actually the, the puzzle of having to kind of think about what you're doing and what order you're going to do things and how you're going to build the, the pyramid to get the best bonuses is just it was a really enjoyable puzzle it's my favorite game of the day for sure yeah that sounds really interesting and it's like it's such an interesting like puzzle and also an interesting theme and then it's like how do they fumble that <laughs> how do they make that so beige oh yeah it's just like you're just trying to appease gods and stuff whatever like, what <laughs> And Aztec art's like so so beautiful and Clear, bright and yeah. vibrant. Vibrant, yeah. 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 You looked at that for two months, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> so dark times, dark times. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Emily, what have you been playing? Let's hear what you've been playing. We'd love to hear. Yeah, I'll talk to you about Drapolta. I I am a huge oink. Do you know oink games? Of course you do. We know games. I don't think I know this one though. No, I don't you know. You know Drapolta? Okay. All right, well, this this will blow your mind. <laughs> Picture this. Picture you have a bunch of junk, like kind of the kind of like little little um, detritus that you find in your drawer. Like you pull in, open a drawer, you just grab a bunch of, a bunch of junk and then you've got it in your hands. And then, so, okay, I'll explain the game like properly. But <laughs> so you have like a little collection of little plastic items. They're in your hand. You'll flip over a card it'll have some of those items that are in your hand on that card. You have to try and drop what is in your hand, like the items that are on the card. You have to drop them out of your hand. And then there's a ghost. You pick up that ghost and then you win the round. Um, (laughs) That's the game. And then as you're going along, if you win the round, like you grab that ghost first before anyone else, then you'll add a little bell. There are little bells into your hand. They're like your points. And then as you go into the next one, you've got a little bell in your hand. That's a little extra challenge. And if you drop that bell, you've lost that point for the rest of the game. Like if you accidentally drop that, you're you're done for. Um, And (laughs) so it's just like this. It's so dumb, but it's so fun. Um, Yeah, it's just like you're just you're just doing this the whole time. I'm just using my hand like a little gremlin almost. Um, You're just like (laughs) manipulating all these things. (laughs) Exactly. And then and then like pulling your finger out to to drop things um with also if you're getting points then you're dingling so it's even more like (laughs) yeah um it's very fun i i really enjoy it um i've talked to tom about it and he also did it in a video as well um and he he talks about how he he brought it up so often I, i it it worries me um about how the more you like as the game goes on it becomes more difficult because your hand gets all sweaty and like sticks to things and stuff. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't have that problem. That's not something that I <laughs> struggled with. I also, I also just have like really cold hands. There are two things that people say about me. Like I know they're going to say about me if when I when I meet them, it's like, oh my god, you're tall. I'm six four. Oh my god, you're tall. I can't believe how tall you are. Um, and then the other one is like, if I'm on a date or something and I'm like holding hands, they're like. Your hands are so cold. Are you okay? I'm like, this is just who I am. It's just who I am. Um, So maybe I just have an advantage. That's right. Born for this game. Exactly. Very fun. And I'm very bad with anything that's like trying to do things quickly. (laughs) Like 
I, I, I just have, like, for my whole life, I've had old lady um, reaction time. Like, terrible, <laughs> terrible reaction times. Like, playing Snap, never. I could never. Um, but, but you know, I, I work it out with this game. I, I love this game. I love Oink games in general. I have so many of them. It's crazy. That game sounds sensational. I feel like I need to pick it up. I feel like this is a game that would work well in therapy. I'm always on the hunt yes. for games I can play with kids in therapy, and yeah. this sounds like it totally fits the bill. You, 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 it's like children, right? Pediatrics? Yeah. 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 Kids. That. Them. That's perfect. <laughs> Those <laughs> <little> them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'd be perfect. And, and, yeah. and kids are so quick, man. There's nothing like being humbled by a kid in um double. Spot it? <laughs> Oh, Mm-mm. humbled. I, yeah. prop, I'm proper trying to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that game's hard. I, I struggle with that. Drapolt, I'll just, I'll just, a couple of comments about Drapolt. It looks, it looks really cute. It must be a new Oink game. I, I haven't seen it. Oh, it, it is. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that and Raft of Five are like the two new ones. Oh, no. But I, I don't have Raft of Five. The components look really, really cute. So the components are like a, a plastic ring. A yeah, there's like a little weird cube. shaped ring, a cube. Yeah, a shell. There's like a key. Yeah, a little shell. Yeah, a little wooden key. And then like a, how do you describe it? Like a little, like it looks like a little biscuit. Like I'm deliberately not paws. describing it. Like in, <laughs> I was saying the other ones. Yeah, like a waffle. I don't a know. A waffle. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. It looks great. It looks, it sounds like my nightmare. I'm terrible at dexterity games and I get very stressed if there's like a speed element. So I probably yeah. do the rest of this game, but it looks great. It is. It is great. You should both play it. Mainly, mainly Lauren with the kids. That sounds perfect. That's, that's yeah. like the ideal situation. Incredible. Are there any other Oink games that you can recommend to listeners that they might oh, not have 100%. Heard of? How much time do we have? <laughs> Let's um, go. Whole podcast, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, <laughs> in, I'm, I'll bring it to the, um, I'll bring both the games together in a way and say an Oink game that I truly despise. <laughs> there's one, there's one, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's something like Fairy's Tomb or Fairy's Pyramid, something along those lines. Yeah, just to bring it back to the previous game, that game sucks. Avoid that game at all costs. I hate that game more than anything. Have you found the it, Pyramid's Joe? Deadline. Pyramid's, Pyramid's deadline. deadline. I was so yeah. far off. Yeah, that's that's a bad one. But the best ones, the best ones are uh, Startups. That's a good yes. one. Have either of you? Love yes. Startups. So good. Startups is so good. Scout? Scout's good. Yes. Oh, the Japanese version of Scout, though, has the plastic cards, which are just <gasps> like, Chef's kiss. Oh my god! You gosh. can bend them. I like, need. There's no tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> you do. You do need Emily. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Um, I I've I've also been playing them online. Like the there's the let's play play oink games. Like they have a they have a digital version. Um, because because yeah. Yeah, this um, is also news to me. That what? <laughs> So, so I, I'm in a long distance relationship right now, and so we've been playing Scout like so many nights. And she's she's never played a board game before, like ever. Um, and then she was like, "Can you show me one? I just want to know." And so I showed her Scout. She picked it up immediately, and we played like every night since. And she beats me literally ninety percent of the time. I'm not even kidding. Somehow, wow. she, somehow, this is just like. And we tried Deep Sea Adventure. And she was like, nah, this doesn't click, but scout for some reason. Anyway. <laughs> Are you sure it's awesome. kind of like some kind of psyop where like this is like an expert board game player who's like just trying it to It could very well be. Game. She could just be using me to try and <laughs> try and get my clout as well. <laughs> um, very yeah. solid recommendations. And and I look, 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 look. Oh obviously a fake artist goes to New York's good. But the one that gets slept on is durian. I love durian and people people don't give it enough credit and I think that's a good one. Is that the one that's got the monkey on the box? Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. I don't so how does that game play? Okay, so the so the theming is that you are working in a fruit shop and it's all run by monkeys or gorillas or yeah. And so essentially it's like you are flipping over cards that say what the orders are you're like getting orders for the shop while also you have what the stock is but you don't see one of the cards for the stock you don't see the card that's in front of you but like everyone else sees everyone else's card 
And so you don't know what's in stock exactly, but you want to get the order to be over what is in your stock. And then you ring the little bell. There's a little bell in it. You ring it. And then you're like, that person that just flipped that card, they're in trouble. They've they've taken an order we can't fulfill. And then that's the game. That sounds great. It's very fun. I can't believe I've played it. <laughs> I don't think I've explained it very well, but it's very fun. It sounds very what? unassuming. Doesn't have any right to be that fun kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like a little pretty basic push your luck type of thing. Who gave you permission? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who gave you permission? It sounds like a vehicle to let you like yell at your friends. Perfect. I love that. Exactly. And then they get like little tokens with the with the gorilla is angry and like the, as it goes along, <laughs> the gorilla's getting That's angrier great. with every token. It's so cute. Lauren, what have you been playing? Ooh, I have well actually I've not always been one for commitment, but we are about to finish Gloomhaven, which feels like <gasps> Wow. A that feat. is a commitment. Yes. That's incredible. But I won't talk about Gleamhaven, but I will say I'm very proud of myself that we're going to finish that campaign that we started at the beginning of COVID. Like, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm proud of you. But uh, a game that I did get the chance to play, which a lot of people have been talking about, is Voidfall as a big old box. So that's by Nigel Buckle and David Turtsey. And it is great. It's very Euro-y. It's not a 4X. It looks 4X-y, but it's not. I will say what I really liked about Voidfall is that even though there are components that are kind of like engine building, everything feels incredible from the very beginning of the game. Right from the outset, I was like, oh my gosh, I could do this, but I could also do this, and this would go with this, and it would give me that, and wow, that's so lovely and exciting. Immediately, for a game that took, it was a learning game, and it took us about four hours, and I don't like games that take that long but it was just really fun i was really engaged the whole time great 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 very good game deserves all the praise it's getting etc i don't know if i would get it for solo because i don't know if the kind of squeeze is worth the juice in just how much time it would take to set up i'm like a whack food chain island on the table after work kind of gal when it comes <laughs> to my solo romps but yeah, very good. I've also played Sale recently, which is just a, a delightful little two-player trick-taking game. So Sale is by um, Akiyama Koryo and Kozu Yusai, with art by Weberson Santiago, who is the guy who did the art for The Bloody Inn and Welling Richcraft and Avalon. Really cool, unique art style. Love, love, love. Sale was a really great trick-taking game. I picked it up as part of the campaign that did Cascadero Cascadito. Uh, You get that as well. So chucked that on. And it's co-op. What you're trying to do is sail your little ship across the board and get it to the other side without terrible things happening. And there's just nice little tense decisions. So... If I win the trick, the ship will sail to my side. If if my partner wins the trick, it'll sail over to his side. But if I win too many tricks, the rounds will end, so we won't get enough turns, so we won't make it all the way to the end. And there's different symbols on the cards, and depending on the kind of combinations of symbols you get, you can do some sort of bonus action. So I'm just kind of giving him the eye, like, you get it, right? You get what I'm about to play. Like, we're... <laughs> we're connecting <laughs> and you know where this is going and we play it and if it if it works like it really works and it's exciting and there's just a lot of kind of it's a no communication game so you can chat between the rounds but once the game or round starts you can't talk I, we we were still chatting heaps but you <laughs> just kind of just try to get into the zone in the mind of the other person which i always find really fun and funny when it doesn't pan out like really just outrageously funny. Yeah. And the production is really lovely, really interesting, tense decisions. You're trying to also use those combinations of symbols to damage the Kraken, which is there's like lots of ways to lose the game and Kraken kind of overwhelms you too much. So yeah, just a a great little trick-taking co-op experience. 10 out of 10 recommend, but 
like a lot of the trick takers I recommend, you kind of got to be into trick taking to play it. I don't think it has the welcoming nature of something like the introductory scenarios of the crew or something like Skull King or Seas of Strife. But if you like a little more oomph to your trick takers, then mwah, chef's kiss. Delicious. So good. <laughs> uh, sale. <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm struggling a bit. Which one of these has to do with pyramids? I thought we had a theme going. <laughs> we had a theme going. Oh, well, <laughs> can talk about something that's got verticality, which is Skyrise. There we go. Have you, have you heard of Skyrise? I you? have heard of Skyrise, yeah. Yeah. It's oh, oh, no, I gosh. saw a photo you posted. Yes. The production for this is just silly. Like, it's just... <laughs> so indulgent. I feel like it's the most decadent board game I could have ever piece my eyes on. I played the Sundrop <laughs> version as well, and it, it just felt like fudge with caramel. But Skyrise is an auction game, Joe, and you kind of, but it's got an interesting area control thing. I actually think you would quite like it. Mm. So you kind of play down your different um, buildings, and they've got different numbered sets between the players, like a la Ra but you kind of play them in chains. And if you win the auction, then you take that area on the map. So I'll place a building, then you'll place one next to it. Then Emily will place one next to that. And we can kind of keep going until someone says, everyone says, no, I'm out. And then wherever the chain ended in the area control, like that's the person who wins the auction. And you're just trying to control maps of this sky island. There you go, verticality, kind of like a pyramid. Yeah, no, yeah, perfect. You brand. nailed it. <laughs> and do kind of different set collection points things. I was very, I was very charmed by it. It's very simple. It, the kind of way the like production versus game weight reminds me a bit of um, what's it? Foundations of Rome. It's this huge, insane production for what is actually a very simple game to play and quite quick. So, but yeah, it was it was really quite charming i don't know how easy it is to get but if you stumble upon a little copy and want to want to give it a give it a try it's it's quite good there you go brave review you. quite quite, I quite pleasant it. <laughs> quite pleasant how did you did you how did you get a copy lauren i play i played harry's i just I, don't, I just I just play his games it's <laughs> of course it's a good idea that's the best it's way fiscally it. responsible way to game to um, keep the theme going, I've got one game, one more game I wanted to quickly talk about. It's kind of pyramid related. It's about a house which is pointy, so houses are pointy. I'll take pyramids it. Are pointy. Got it. Cool. But Emily, stamp of approval. I'll go ahead. Scraping <laughs> the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Expected. I've got Nothing one about less. Ice when... cream, like the cone. I guess it's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom's pointy. You know, that's right. Uh, so the game I wanted to talk about was a game called Decorum. Have either of you heard of Decorum? Yeah. I'm so excited Super to hear about fun. this game. Super fun. <laughs> so I, it had been on my wish list for quite some time on Board Game Oracle, but I felt like the price it was going for based on the weight, I, I just wasn't sure. So I kind of had put it off for a long time. Um, I also was probably going to play it primarily two-player with my husband, uh, and I find two-player games really hard to get to the table. So I'd kind of been putting it off and then finally bit the bullet and bought it. And it's really fun. The The theme of the game is you are playing as uh, a couple, essentially. You're trying to decorate your home and the game comes with a campaign almost with a story, with some storylines that are part of it where uh, you, uh, each player across the table uh, each try have their own design goals for the house and, and uh, they might be in conflict or different to each other. And, within the house uh, of, that is the game board. It's in the shape of a house that has four different rooms in it. You can paint the walls different colours and then there's different um, pieces of furniture you can include in the house as well in the different rooms. So it's things like, I think there's four different types of furniture. It's like paintings, uh, mirrors, lamps. Um, one other thing that I can't remember off the top of my head, I'm not sure if you guys know. But there's different uh, types of furniture and then they all have different themes of their own and um, they're different colours to so different... Uh, there'll be different colors, uh, blue, yellow, red, green, uh, and then there'll be different themes as well, things like modern or retro, uh, th that sort of thing. And so the thing I really liked about this game is that you have your own unique goals for the house. So things like it might be something like you want every room in the house to be red, uh, painted red, 
or you only want yellow items to be in, a, in the kitchen and nowhere else in the house, for example. And the other person might have some conflicting uh, goals where it might be, you know, um, the kitchen can't have anything that has a painting in it, for example. And the, the twist of the game is you're not allowed to obviously communicate what's on your cards other than through passive aggressive comments about whether or not you yeah, enjoy or like the like thing that's in the house, <laughs> uh, which I, so I played this with my sister actually in the end. And we really got into the role playing of being in a relationship on the rocks <laughs> while we were playing it uh, and uh, got real passive aggressive with each other about, no, that blue lamp is shit. We don't want to see that lamp. <laughs> Get it out of here. It doesn't belong in the kitchen. Um, that's that's not very passive. I would. <laughs> well, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. And what's yeah. aggressive then? <laughs> well, yeah, no, we're Italian. You know, that's passive for us. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, there's no fisticuffs <laughs> involved. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No machine. No Tommy guns being pulled out from under the table. Um, <laughs> And so the, I guess the point of the game is you're trying to both of you meet your requirements on your cards and do it within a minimum number of rounds, essentially, to get the most maximum number of points. Uh, and the thing I really enjoyed is that on the cards for each person, you have this flavor text about who, you, who each other is playing, what the nature of your relationship is, uh, and it gives you a little outro story as well once you finish the, finish the game. So it was nice and light, um, really pretty. You can upgrade the game with these really beautiful acrylic, acrylic um, tiles as well, which I haven't yet, but I've looked at that website a few times now. Um, but yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. I just love the idea about being able to trash someone's design choices. <laughs> it was just so fun. It's yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, it's if you enjoy that kind of banter, you know, partner, friend, I think yeah, really enjoy. Yeah. It. And is that because that's the way you communicate, right? Depending on how much you say you hate it or like the kind of vigor with which you, it's the only way you can communicate, right? Yeah, you, you're not allowed to. So I guess the action you take in the game is you can either add something to a room from this common board that has all of the different types of furniture. You can take something out of a room or you can swap uh, a like item for a like item. So you could swap a red painting for a green painting, for example. So that's the three different things you can do. So you can't actually comment what specifically you hate about it. You just say that whatever that action they took, you either like it, you're neutral, or you hate it. And then, you know, very pretty simple in terms of the actual actions, but the, I think the, it's one of those games, it's the flavor you put into it uh, and the role playing you get into that really um, really gives it the, the joy, the juice. The juice, classic the juice. that Italian classic hand gesture. Term. The you juice. sip your limoncello and <laughs> 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 painting. Really? We're going to put that lamp there? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's a choice. <laughs> that's right. That's a big choice. Uh, so that was Decorum. Uh, it was designed by, uh, it is designed by Charlie Mackin, Harry Mackin, True Tenenbaum, great name, and published by Floodgate Games. Amazing. So we've had a slew of games. We've had quick mentions of Voidfall, Sale, Skyrise, Teotihuacan, and as well as a series of Oink games that are just sound absolutely delightful, except for one that is not delightful that we'll never speak of again. <laughs> Strike it from the record. Get it out of here. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, brilliant. Well, with that, we're going to move on to some quick announcements. <laughs> So, PlayCon 2024, if you're listening to this podcast on the day of release, there's less than 48 hours for you to order your official PlayCon t-shirt. The graphics were designed by Ian O'Toole and the charity that he nominated for all of the profits for these shirts to go to is the Aboriginal Arts Centre hub in Western Australia. So you can head to play-con.com to order them. Art and storytelling have been practiced by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people on these lands for tens of thousands of years, and the Aboriginal Arts Centre Hub Western Australia works to connect Aboriginal artists and art centres across the region, and you can, he you can head to aachwa.com.au to find out more. The fourth annual Board Game Barbecue Awards nominations are open. Nominations are open to any member of the Board Game Barbecue community, whether that be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord. Uh, there's a link in the show notes where you'll be able to nominate. 
uh, in any of the eight categories, which are best solo game, party game, light, medium, and heavy game, best artwork, best expansion, and the game of the year. Nominations close Sunday, May 26th, so you have less than a week as, at the time of this podcast to nominate your favorite games. So go on, get out there, go do that. And once the nominations are closed, the top five games from each category will be voted on by our esteemed judges, our Patreons, and the winners will be announced live at PlayCon in July. If you're looking to add to your board game collection without taking out a second mortgage, then look no further than Advent Games. Dean and the team don't just sell games, they play games, they know games, they love games, just like us. The first thing you notice when you head to adventgames.com.au is the amazing range of games. Dean and the team have worked tirelessly to make sure that every game is properly catalogued into the website. You can search by card games, dice games, family games, gateway games, solo games, and games from your favorite designers. And they don't just have games. Advent has a huge range of RPG books, game inserts, organizers, sleeves, even miniatures and scenery to make your next game night an experience to remember. Shipping is a flat $10 if you live in the Sydney metro area, $15 for the rest of Australia. And don't forget, if you sign up for their newsletter, every Friday you receive an email with the latest specials, newest arrivals, and a list of all the games that have just come back into stock. So there's no excuse for missing out on that game that you desperately want in your collection. So why not grab your next sizzling game from Advent Games? Head to adventgames.com.au now. So now we're going to move on to our question of the pod. So the question from the previous pod was, what's your favorite blend of mechanics? Emily, do you have any thoughts on this? Little mashups of mechanics you like? Oh, hell yeah. Well, I mean, we talked about it earlier with Dune Imperium. Goodness me. I mean, like, I played so much of it, so that's probably why it's in my head. (laughs) And they're, like, so (laughs) unique. Anyway, (laughs) work a place in deck building. That's a good combo. I, I really enjoyed that game. Um, I mean, I kind of hate it now because I played it so much, but I'm very good at it. And if anyone wants to play me, I, I'm looking. I'm looking for people to destroy. I need validation. <laughs> if anyone wants to be humbled, <laughs> the goal yeah. is humiliation. That's right. <laughs> exactly. I, I. I mean, I don't try and win. I. I. I, I don't care about winning. Uh, uh, also, Art Society. I've been playing, and that's like. There's a combination of of um, auction and tile laying, which is really interesting. That was fun. That's fun stuff. Modern art is like my favorite game of all time, so I, I love a good auction. Back to you, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I love a good auction game as well. I've actually not tried modern art, which is crazy. Have you really not? I know. I know. Why am I here? <laughs> I'm ending this call. I'm so sorry. I'll leave. <laughs> so let's hear from some of our responses. Joe, do you want to read out some of the responses from our community members? From our Facebook, Micah mentioned that card drafting and area control in Bunny Kingdom is a delightful blend. Robert Jackson said that deck building and co-op, uh, like in Aeon's End, is a genius move. There's so many other really clever ones, though. Trick taking co-op in the crew, deck building and board movement or Dungeon Exploration in Clank, Worker Placement and Tableau Building in Everdell. Um, and then, you know, someone, of course, brought up June Imperium. Nadia Simmons mentioned that Worker Placement and Deck Building in June Imperium. Nadia. Um, something they really liked. Hell yeah, Nadia. Yeah, Nad- <laughs> yeah Nadia's on Emily's wavelength for sure. Nadia's going to get humiliated. I'm going to bet you. <laughs> <laughs> they would be so lucky, Emily. They would be so lucky. <laughs> and then Shaitad comes in with a similar vein he says i love deck building mashed with something else jude imperium arc nova and endless winter have been huge hits for me for this reason with deck building and worker placement not sure if quest for el dorado counts as deck building hybrid but for sure it feels like that and i love it same as clank same as the clank games as well pure deck building games i've played dominion star realms just feel empty the pairing with a different mechanic is what makes it shine Beautiful. Tom, or Uberface, as he's known in our Discord, says, I love multi-use cards, really simple way to create interesting decisions in a game. June was a very popular answer for that question. Mm. Really? People, people love June. Well, you're expected- foreshadowing it. <laughs> I, I expected June Imperium and Lost Ruins of Arnak to feature pretty, um, pretty heavily. 
So our new question of the pod, inspired by Emily's love of trivia and trivia with her friends, and perhaps kind of upcoming trivia videos on various platforms, which we have uh, get to look forward to. The new question of the pod is, what is a good piece of board game related trivia? If you want to support the podcast, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash board game barbecue. You get access to exclusive podcasts, episode that we record just for our Patreons and lovely little shenanigans. There are plenty of ways to support the podcast without donating. The easiest way, tell your mates, leave us a review, Apple Podcasts, Spotify's new star rating system. If that's not for you, well then just heck, get involved in the board game barbecue community. Our Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube. Our Discord community is really active. There's always conversations going on. So get involved and all the links are in the show notes. So with that, we'll move on to the swearing of an oath. So here we go. Promises that were kept or not kept. Joe, how did you go with your oath? I have a long standing oath to play Ticket to Ride Legacy with my husband and it has not happened um we've been waiting to try and play it with uh, my sister and her boyfriend as well um because we'd heard it was better at four players than two players uh so what i did I'm not instead mad, Joe. i'm not mad i'm just disappointed I, it's okay. shame Joe. i'm mad join the line join the line of disappointed <laughs> yeah, people yeah. that are Emily's out mad. the door <laughs> <laughs> yeah emily's not disappointed she's mad <laughs> I am. I am sizzling. <laughs> uh, what I did end up doing is I bought, end up buying My City because I was like, I'm going to get a legacy game that my husband and I can sit down and play together. And we started playing that actually yesterday, and that was really fun. But I am still planning to play Ticket to Ride Legacy. It's hanging over me like a sword of Damocles. But uh, mm-hmm. my other oath was to play Worm Spam, which I actually played today. So uh, <gasps> okay, I'm less mad now. That. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Is it large? What do you think? Uh, burden off my shoulders i enjoyed it i enjoyed it quite a bit um i had i also enjoyed wingspan as well i ended up selling my copy because of wingspan because i had a a bad experience where i played a five player game that went for like two and a half hours and i was like never again i'm not playing this game ever again so i was a bit hesitant to play wormspan but actually really enjoyed it i thought it was a maybe a step up in terms of complexity from from wingspan um, had some interesting new decisions that were a bit different to Wingspan, and the art was really cute. I thought the you know the color the color palette and the the art of the game was really cute as well. I enjoyed it. My new oath, uh, I managed to bully one of my friends into selling her copy of Inventions: Evolution of Ideas, which is Vital Lacerda's latest game, and I've got a little crew of um, little crew of gay boys that get together and we play Lacerda games together, um, which I really love and uh, so we're gonna i'm gonna uh, plan to learn that and uh, teach them to play that soon joe your gay boys and emily your straight boys should get together and play a game of two rooms in a bit (laughs) (laughs) that'd be so much fun that does sound so much fun (laughs) (laughs) maybe the boon will make them all gay boys anyway (laughs) (laughs) that was the gay agenda all along (laughs) Incredible. (laughs) All right. I had an oath to try the expansion for Fields of Isle, which is the tea and trade expansion. (laughs) I've not done that, but I will double down in the face of Emily's rage. I'm angry. There's (laughs) a a little backstory to my new oath. So I did an interview with a high schooler from California called Anjani Kumala. She was doing an assignment on board gaming and psychology and reached out to me through email and asked if she could interview me for a documentary that she had to make for her assignment. So I thought that was really neat. I, of course, said yes. And in the context of that interview, I asked her what her favorite board game was. And she said, Planted by Phil Walker Harding. And I've never played it before. Well, Anjani, I've now ordered Planted and it's on its way. So that's my new oath. I'm going to play your favorite game, which is the little Phil Walker Harding, really beautiful looking light 
game. So I'll give that a try. Double down on my previous oath. Yes. Emily. This no, but that seems like a proper if you don't if you don't meet that one, like I was joking about the other anger, but if you don't meet that one <laughs> I'm gonna be really upset. <laughs> you can't disappoint a child, Lauren. You, but like I know. <laughs> truly. And it's so nice of her to reach out to you. Yeah, I love you it. It's a cute that. story. She was really lovely. She was really lovely. Plays games with her mum. Just such a sweetheart. And yeah, so Really hoping to give that a try. She said that she keeps it on her bedside table and her and her mum play it like every day, which I just thought was so outrageously wholesome. Not hoping, not hoping, Lauren. You're going to play this. <laughs> you have to. Absolutely. Emily, would you like yeah. to partake and make an oath about something you're going to play, something you're going to do related to board games? Yeah, fr from you talking earlier, I've never played gloomhaven or any of i haven't played frosthaven i haven't played jaws of the lion what a pathetic wow. how am i how am i on shut up and sit down and i've never never even done that um jaws I've got the to lion's one so of those. good yeah I've jaws got of the lion's so good i've got to do it it just feels like the kind of game where i will most likely only play it if someone else brings it to me <laughs> like i'll be all in but but the the likelihood that i will be the one to present it to people like I have to, I have to really put in the effort too. But now, now I've sworn an oath, so I guess I have to. Uh, you've opened the floodgates, though. You're gonna be getting those DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at your door, Do it. Gloomhaven. Do it. I'm at your door in Melbourne to play Gloomhaven with you. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong, Emily. I don't know who. Like, get out of there. Uh, brilliant. So that's that's the oath, Gloomhaven or Jaws the Lion or something in the, yeah. in the Gloomhaven universe. Yeah, or maybe just like another oink game or something. I don't know, I'm pretty loose on this. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, with that, Emily, thank you so much for joining us. This has been an exceptionally joyous podcast to record. I've had a lot of fun. We've spoken about some games. I am going to now go purchase that oink game if I can find it. Hell yeah. So, Hell yeah. 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 Incredible. But will you play Joe? it? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> I don't play half the games I buy. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much for joining me. As always, a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you so much, Emily. It really um, was such a delight having you on the pod and uh, really am so glad that there is uh, representation out there for people um, who might be different in the board gaming hobby. Uh, oh my gosh. I'm very, very proud of you and I hope you're proud of yourself for, for what you represent. Thank you. I'm proud of you too, Joe, for the same reasons, truly. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for I having me. Shout out for all the wonderful people doing the hard work because it's not always easy to be the face of representation of people who are different or not kind of the bulk of this hobby necessarily. So really, truly, thank you so much for all the work you do. Hell yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. See ya. Bye.